Uh, my name is Katerina and I'm from the east side from, from, of Ukraine. From the very beginning of the war, I hoped for the best. Uh, my mom hoped for the best and we didn't want to leave because it was like um, pretty much okay. It was uh, air raid sirens, but we got used to them very quickly. I heard the first explosion on the 24 of uh, of uh, February when all of this started in my native city Dnipro and then I got to uh, my mom to the small village uh, more to east part of Ukraine it got worse when we heard this uh, explosion 10 kilometers from our house the whole people in the village were shocked because they thought that in the village it will be safer and better place to stay when we heard it I started to uh, persuade my mom to leave for Dnipro because I thought it would be safer here because of the air defense and its city, it will be more protected, not so close to the Donetsk region. But then at night we woke up because of the explosion. So usually explosions happened at first and then air raid starts, sirens begin, but still we we tried to continue living normal life in these conditions. I went to volunteering, it helped me to distract a little bit, to stay in a normal sense, so to say. And uh, for my mom it was harder, she lost her job, but I was trying to support her. So my friend called me and said that Kyiv uh, is uh, under attack of rockets and uh, under bombing. So my friends and my relatives, my brother, my sister were also at Kyiv that day, so I couldn't sleep. I think now I, I got used to all of this and after a while, after vacating, after being in a safe place, I just lost my emotions. I think uh, it was too much of stress. It was too much of, sorry. <laughs> Too much of panic and worries about my family, my friends, and I just lost any feelings and no happiness. Yeah, I still have some trauma, I think, but I'm quite a positive person in life <laughs> and uh, I'm always trying to help people to stay positive. I think it's like my mission <laughs> to help more people I can. I'm trying to distract from all of this, try to laugh, try to uh, live a normal life, but it's impossible, I think, for now. One day happened more explosions and they were more intensive as before. So after that night when it was more intensive explosions, like um, uh, closer to our house than before, we decided that it would be yeah, actually better to live. And in the hallway of a train, it was also all a lot of people staying or sitting on their suitcase, laying on the floor, like just trying to evacu evacuate in this panic. We have a dog, we couldn't evacuate like that. It would be better to live and stay under this um, air raid siren than to live in, that, in such conditions. Uh, we've heard that there is um, a special train uh, which are not evacuate which is not evacuation train anymore and you can buy a ticket for this train we had like um, two suitcases not not too big but it was uh, a little bit um, hard for us with the dog and uh, to change all these different kinds uh, and means of transportation a friend of mine uh, helped us to find a host family of volunteers who uh, can uh, host us and we stayed in Dusseldorf in Germany with them. They gave us a room, pretty comfortable, we can stay there till we find another place and right now we are uh, doing all these registration stuff and it takes too much time in Germany because there are uh, many refugees from Ukraine. When I came there, I uh, could uh, sleep uh, like uh, peacefully and uh, really sleep, not just waking up every night and going to the hallway and sit in the cold hallway. As I know German and as I can speak German fluently, two, two days or three days ago, just uh, fulfilled the form to become a volunteer in uh, translations, interpretation for Ukrainian refugees. I met people uh, here which has, uh, which have the same stories as me, and we shared the stories, and we have 
all this kind of feelings that we are lost, that uh, only Ukrainians can understand Ukrainians who overlive the situations and you feel like better with these people like you. I met other young European ambassadors from Ukraine and uh, with them I could share my stories because they also lived the same, not like totally same, but very similar stories and it's really helpful to be with people who can really understand you.